Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot tell you how cool this is. Uh, I, <laughs> I just fixed an Acorn Electron. I took the ULA from one PCB, a couple of donor PCBs were very kindly sent to me. I took a, a, a ULA chip socket and ULA from one PCB and fitted it to the original PCB inside the Acorn Electron. And boom, uh, volume, and boom, look at that. We've got a working retro Acorn Electron. Uh, and this, uh, as a kid, this was part of my childhood. Um, you know, uh, my parents bought, must have spent, I think, my parents must have spent maybe £350 uh, when I was the age of, I don't know, um, 12 years old, something like that. They bought me an Acorn Electron and a cassette tape machine and uh, a few uh, cassette tapes. And, and I was typing in programs, um, you know, from magazines and, and eventually sort of uh, learned uh, how to program in BASIC. And then I started making a bit of headway in assembly language. This is wicked. <laughs> I've managed to repair an Acorn Electron with a soldering iron and a few tools and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I'm thoroughly stoked. And now I have an Acorn Electron that sounds magnificent. The keyboard just has an amazing sound to it. I've also uh, made some extra repairs. The uh, UHF modulator uh, was a little loose on this one, so I've now fixed that one with some soldering. And um, uh, the N key didn't work, which uh, apparently now it does. So uh, again, that was fixed with a soldering iron. So everything seems to be working on the Acorn Electron. The problem that I face at the moment, I don't have any tapes for this. I have found a fantastic website and the website effectively uh, has uh, 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 online tapes. So um, it plays them through the headphone socket on your computer. So my next challenge is to take some of these cables here, which are used to plug the Acorn Electron into the tape player and adapt them so that I can plug them straight into my computer. In fact, what I might do is I might go ahead and adapt these cables so that they plug into my little Sony MP3 pocket recorder player. Um, so that would be quite cool. Imagine that sitting here instead of this. Much easier to fast forward, rewind. I know it's not quite as nostalgic, but it's sort of cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, and I've got options now. Um, uh, what games am I going to play? I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Elite is certainly one that I'd love to have a go at. Snapper would be quite good fun. I hear Chucky Egg is brilliant. Repton 3, uh, I think, was magnificent. Boulder Dash... Um, and there's, there's a whole host of old Electron games that I'd love to have a tinker with. Um, this isn't really a gaming channel, it's more of an engineering channel. But while there's an opportunity to play a few games, <laughs> watch out for those. They're proper old retro games. So we might even at some point, I have ordered a webcam as well, we might even at some point have a bit of a live stream evening or something like that. So that would be quite good fun. Anyway, for now, this is absolutely magnificent. So here's the instructional part of the video. So prepare your tools. You might want some reading glasses, some tweezers, a flux pen, screwdrivers, solder sucker, soldering iron, some cutters, maybe a magnifying glass. Make sure you've got some, some way of removing the solder from the existing chip. And uh, make sure you've prepared your boards, your donor boards. So if you're an old git like me, you might want to get your uh, your reading glasses on before you start this process. My eyes are failing horribly at the moment. I couldn't see what I was doing half the time. And um, there's a bit of a skill to being able to suck the solder from, the, uh, from around the pin, but you'll get used to it. Practice on your donor PCB first, on the one that you don't care about. And once you've done that, then take some tweezers and check that you've got compliance in those pins. And eventually, with a bit of 
careful pulling and some twisting and some gentle uh, encouragement, you should be able to pull that uh, ULA and its chip socket off the PCB. I left the chip inside the chip socket in order to give that chip socket some more strength. And then obviously you need to remove the old chip socket from the old PCB, from, from the PCB that you're going to repair. Um, uh, that can come off uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit more aggressively. Again, be careful of the tracks. And what I was using here was some flux pen and uh, some solder wick in order just to clean up the pads that are on that PCB. Again, there was more corrosion underneath the um, the ULA chip socket. So uh, once that's cleaned up, obviously it's always a good idea to make sure that you've got your workbench clean and free of any potential bits of metal debris that might cause a short on the PCB. And then make sure that you take care to orient the uh, re the replacement and the new chip or the uh, the donor chip make sure that that's the right way around ensure that all the pins are straight so again use your reading glasses and maybe a magnifying glass and very 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 carefully pop that in place give it a good wiggle make sure that all of those pins are and don't force it don't don't force it in a you know make sure it uh, make sure it goes in carefully then what you'll probably want to do, um, there's many ways to do this, obviously, but what I did is I took a pair of pliers there, a pair of cutters to, um, to support that chip, and I soldered one or two chip legs. And once I was happy that everything was in place properly, I then went ahead and did a complete solder run. So uh, there are many different ways of soldering. What I do is I uh, use my iron. That's a TS100 iron, by the way. It's a cracking little iron. Um, and what I did is uh, I uh, used the iron to apply the heat first to the both the pin and the pad and then uh, I put in a little bit of solder and the kind of solder that I use is leaded old school solder um, that's probably why my brain cells are starting to fail uh, but I do find that the um, unleaded solder just doesn't quite have the purchase doesn't look shiny and nice and once everything's soldered up, check your joints and make sure everything's good. Plug it all back together and boom, you're done. So thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you ever so much for taking time out to give it a little thumbs up and maybe put some comments in about what you did as a kid and what games perhaps you played and maybe uh, was what some of your experiences were with some of your retro computers. See you in the next one. Cheers. Nice pint of tea.